Good morning. Chuck here at Garden Spot Acres. Welcome back to video seven of the Playhouse build. Let's take a look. Let's take a walk around here and see what we got done and where we're heading today. Well, since you've seen, I've started putting some siding on. I got some siding on the front here. We worked around the window. We started the siding on the long side here. I just wanted to get some siding up, but I had a couple hours of nice weather the other day. <clears throat> Take a walk up top. And you saw the video where we put the decking on the loft. I have some loft supports here. These two go straight down to the floor. That's also gonna be where I put my ladder. I have some railing uprights that I put in. And the railing's gonna, two, I'm gonna have two rails going across from here over to the uh, trusses and from here over to the trusses. And this here is gonna be open, obviously. And look down inside. We have all our solid blocking in for nailers, for our vertical siding. And that's where we're at right now. So, thanks for coming along. Let's get working on some more of this siding. But before we do that, I have a couple things I need to finish up before I forget. One of them is <clears throat> to tie this board in here to my joist underneath my floor joist. I have it construction screwed in the middle and on the ends, but I don't have screws in every 12 inches yet so i'm gonna do that and i forgot to do that before i started putting some siding on so i can still catch one screw on the bottom there well over here i'm gonna put two in then i can do that on the other side so when we get done with these screws we'll get back to work on the siding again thanks for coming along today is siding day once that's on i think we're gonna start putting the trusses up okay Working in the gravel is nice and neat, but it sure is hard on the knees. That takes care of the skirt board there. So I'm gonna start siding from here over now. Thank <laughs> you. 
when you're nailing these in, you don't want to nail all the way over to the right hand side where the tongue is. You just want to put a nail here, possibly one in the middle, but then go back and nail. Leave this open here. That way you can, it won't be so tight up against the studs here that the next one will be a, much more difficult to put in. And I don't go crazy trying to get everything tight here. These are gonna open up with the humidity and close up with humidity. Dry, they open up, humid, they close up. So just like knotty pine inside of a house. So again, I'll nail here, then go back and nail the last board. So here, then here, Now when I have a board that's separated this much, usually you don't know if it's, this board is tapered, but it is tight all the way from here up. Then it starts pulling out here. So what I'm gonna do is try to push that over as much as I can. I'm just gonna put a board in here like this. Take a little board like this for a pry board. And see if I can't move that over a little bit. Yeah, I can, I can close that gap up. It's right here, it starts to taper. That's the board's problem. Here, it's the, the ward is warped. Here, down here, it's just cut different. So I'm gonna pull that over. Like that. Well, that takes me to my window. I'm gonna take my next board, put it in. Hopefully she sits right in. Trying to get it a little bit even at the top there, that's good. But now you can see this one's doing the same thing. So it's probably a better idea not to even move that board down here. Just leave it where it was. Probably I pushed the board over. So somewhere along the way here, I have to fix this. So what I'm gonna do is just tap that in. Kind of make it even on top and bottom. Then I'm gonna come up here and cut out my door, my window opening. I'm just tracing that. And here I have my window opening. I'm on the back side of the board, so I can overcut this and it won't show on the front, even though that's gonna be covered on the front here with the window framing. So 
gonna do a plunge cut. I'm gonna make sure it's lined up here on my guide. And I'm gonna drop it down right onto the line. And you can see that, really nice looking. Okay, she's not gonna interfere with the sill here. Not gonna interfere up here. That's good. Now down here, I got, I like to push that over a little bit and just close that gap up. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Grab my board, put it in there. See how much I can close that up. I'm not gonna close it all the way this time. Cause I got, I think I'm just overcompensating for a bad board somewhere. Keep those handy down there. Okay, now I'm into the cutting these short pieces here. And I'll cut the same, I'll cut the same amount of short pieces up here. Meet back over here, then put another board on and have to cut that one out. Let's see what I need. Thirty-four and three eighths, or thirty-six and three eighths. I think that's what that says. Yeah, 36 and 3 eighths. Well, that's not right. Well, I'm glad I didn't cut all those. I gotta go from the bottom of the board up. Uh, 34 and 3 eighths. I'm gonna do 34 and 3 eighths. That's why I don't make sure this doesn't interfere with the sill here. And the top ones, six inches. Yeah, that'll do it. So 34 and 3 eighths, six inches, don't let me forget. I got a board here that's split. You can see it split right down through here. So it's not good for much else. So I'm gonna see if I can't cut my sixes out of that. I love this Dewalt nailer. I'm using three inch framing nails in here, galvanized to put the siding on.
See that split here because it had such a bow in it? But when I get my window on here, the window trim and a top trim, that's all going to be hidden anyways. I only needed two of those. Why don't you guys tell me that? So I don't need to use that split one. Throw that to the kindling pile. That hit something. So now I gotta go over and cut two 34 and 3 8. That was the number, right? 34 and 3 8. 34 and 3 8. That'll be 68 and 3 quarters over here. Take into account the kerf of the saw blade. So a little bit long, a little bit longer than 68 and three quarters. And as soon as I say it, I probably will do it. But I haven't flipped the board over backwards yet. Where the rough side is out. I want the smooth side out. Easier to paint. That way, easier to prime and paint. That looks good there. Look at that, right to the edge. That's fine. I'm not gonna do much else with that. I'm not even gonna trace it and cut it out. I'm gonna pop it into place. I'd like to push that over if I could. Get that little bit of bow out of there. I can see it's a bow because it's coming right down here. And it's going this way. I'm gonna see if I can't get that out of there. Give me a minute to get set up and I'll show you what I'm trying to do. So I'm gonna put a block here and I'm gonna try to wedge down and see if I can't push this board here 
over a little bit. I mean, I'm close to the end of my run here anyways. Doesn't make a big difference. But I'd like to get that over closer. So I'm using some four inch screws here. Place my block in, I don't want my block moving. Let's see if this little wedge here will work. Don't know if it's going to or not, but we'll try. Well, that's not working. Let's try a different one. Try this one. Oh, not bad. It came closer. I might be able to pull it this way. Yeah, I can move it a little bit that way. So let me go ahead and see if I can't break my fingers or something here. Push that over as far as I can. Well, it brought it in maybe an eighth of an inch. Yeah, it's almost even right here all the way down. That wasn't too bad. Just another way you can move boards. And I got the same thing here. You can see it running here. Getting a little narrower down here. But there's the gap down there. So I wonder what I hit here. Don't have a clue, but that's not coming out. Oh, so I gotta do the same little wedge trick over here. Wow. Guess I'll take that one out. Use this one. <laughs> okay. Now see if I can't wedge down through there a little bit and move that over. I've had a lot of experience with tongue and groove. My house in New York was entirely tongue and groove. Floors, ceilings, walls, everything. So I'm well versed in how to wedge boards around. Yeah, that brought that in. From here down, it's probably a board problem. 
an uncut uh, wrong cut board but I'm not too bad over here on this edge and I'm actually gonna fill that in because I'm not sure if I'm gonna mold, put anything around these corners or not over here in the front let me show you over here in the front I left no reason to go ahead and put any corner trim on here I got it flush all the way up top and bottom here so I'm gonna go ahead and do that in the back I may change my mind and end up you know buying some metal trim trim here or something to put on the corners but not sure so I'm gonna take that wedge out we're gonna trace or scribe that piece here cut it and put that in then I'll be ready to turn the corner here yeah I got to thinking about this I don't want to scribe this on the back and make that a tapered piece that'll just make me have to uh, recut my board when I turn the corner to make it square again so what I'm going to do is measure the widest distance here from here out to here and maybe add a, a 16th of an inch just to make it come past my framing up here that way it'll be past my framing down here but then my next piece which I can still use the same piece as I'm turning the corner I still have my tongue on I can turn the corner and then it'll make this nice and square and nice looking here on the corner it'll make the boards flush with each other that way this board here can overlap this one out here this board will come out to here that makes sense so I'm gonna cut the wide I'm gonna cut the wide from here to here make it the same width all the way down through down here she's gonna be sitting out maybe a quarter of an inch then my next board I'm gonna put on so it comes out past this one and makes a nice corner that way I can make one cut and turn the corner and not have to make that second cut looks like if I make that one and five sixteenths I'll have what I want so it'll be, it'll be perfect up here and coming out beyond here one and five sixteenths get out the vintage chalk line plum bob combo the chalk line is actually a plum bob too They don't have the luxury of wooden sawhorses here. So if I cut too close, I'm going to cut into my metal wagon. <laughs> so I don't want to do that. Okay, there's the piece I need. Oh, very nice. Right here where I want it here. And she's out past here, which is fine. I'm just gonna go ahead and pop a couple nails in. See where my nailer is. My nailer is here.
Let me get a nail there. Guess I don't need to know where my nailer is. I'm in the... I'm on the corner stud here, right? Yeah. We got that wall done. Now I have other chores. Hey, I've got other things I got to do today. Thanks for coming along on this video. I'm going to go ahead and finish up, put the siding on here before the next video. The next video is definitely going to be the trusses. Hey, putting them up, showing you a couple little tricks there to hold them in place if you're working alone. And I'll probably end up just turning this corner before I quit for the day. It's supposed to rain today and I got about 30 bushels of green grass I got put into my compost yesterday from five different lawns. So I'm gonna go ahead and mix some of this compost with that compost, mix it all together and then uh, get it going again right now she's about 140 degrees i like to see it about 160 so adding this green in will really do that so if you want to come along for that i will video that it'll be at the end of this video but that's the end of the build for today thanks for coming along i appreciate you guys a lot thanks for watching the videos thanks for sharing the videos and if you could could you like and comment it means a lot to the youtube algorithm for um getting views again thanks a lot for coming along next video trusses see you then have a great day bye bye